a block connected to two springs. A 3 kg block is connected to two ideal horizontal springs having force constants K1 equals 25 newtons per centimeter and K2 equals 20 newtons per centimeter. As you can see in the figure, the left spring has spring constant K1, the right spring has spring constant K2. The system is initially in equilibrium on a horizontal frictionless surface. The block is now pushed 15 centimeters to the right and released from rest. So it's going to oscillate like this. Part A, what is the maximum speed of the block? Where in the motion does the maximum speed occur? Part B, what is the maximum compression of spring 1? Okay, so uh, we're going to calculate the potential energy of the system when it is pushed 15 centimeters to the right. So the potential energy stored in the first spring will be equal to 1 over 2 spring constant K1 delta X1 squared. Delta X1 and delta X2 will be the same because uh, in magnitude so this is if this is pushed 15 centimeters to the right this will be stretched 15 centimeters so this is going to be 1 over 2 uh, let's convert k1 to si units 25 newtons per centimeter so it's going to be 25 divided by 10 to minus 2 meters multiplied with 15 centimeters square, 15 times 10 to minus 2 squared. So this gives us 28.125 joules. The potential energy stored in the second spring will be 1 over 2 K2 delta X squared. Likewise, so this will be equal to 1 over 2 uh, K2 plus 20 newtons per centimeter. So it's 20 divided by 10 to minus 2 meters. And the same amount of change in the length of the spring is 15 centimeters. So it's 15 10 to minus 2 squared. So the potential energy stored in the second spring is 22.5 joules. So <clears throat> the question is, uh, what is the maximum speed and where in, the mac uh, where in the motion does the maximum speed occur? Well, uh, for maximum speed, the rate of change of the uh, velocity with time should be zero. So we need the maximum speed, the speed is a function of time. We are looking for its extremum point. It will occur when its derivative with respect to time is zero. So the maximum speed will occur when dv dt is equal to zero. That means the acceleration is zero. And that means the net force acting on the system should be zero. So that's the point where we will have maximum speed. All right, so when do we have a net force equal to zero? Well, when the block passes through the equilibrium point, equilibrium position, which is the initial position. F net is zero because we will have no restoring force from the springs. So the maximum speed will occur 
when passing through the equilibrium point. So delta x on these on these springs should be zero. Okay. And when we reach the equilibrium point, the final potential energy stored in spring one and final potential energy stored in spring two will be zero because all the potential energy that was stored in these springs will be converted into kinetic energy. So delta U1 plus delta U2 is the change in potential energy of the system. U1 final minus U1 initial 28.125 plus U2 final minus U2 initial 22.5. The change in potential energy of the system will be minus 50.625 joules. And since we have zero friction, it's a frictionless uh, surface, the change in the mechanical energy of the system, delta K plus delta U, will be equal to zero. So we have conservation of energy since it's frictionless. Conservation of mechanical energy. All right. So, uh, delta K, the change in the kinetic energy, should be equal to minus the change in potential energy, which is 50.625 joules. That is final kinetic energy, 1 half mv final square minus what is the initial kinetic energy when it is uh, pushed all the way to the right, 15 centimeters to the right, and released from rest. That means initial kinetic energy was zero here. So we find that the final speed is going to be equal to um, 2 times 50.625 divided by <clears throat> the mass. The mass is 3 kilograms, so it is 3 square root, and this gives us 5.81 meters per second as the final speed when we pass through the equilibrium position. Or we can look at this symbolically, uh, one, uh, one half k1 delta x squared plus one half k2 delta x squared is equal to one half m v final squared so that uh, so the left hand side is minus delta u so this gives us the symbolic answer for the final speed k1 plus K2 divided by m square root times delta x. So that's the symbolic answer. Okay, so in part b, I want to know how much will be the maximum compression in the first spring. So since I have conservation of energy, delta E mechanical is equal to zero with no friction. The final potential energy stored in the first spring will be one half K1 delta X prime squared, which will also cause a stretch in the second spring by the same amount. So one half K2 delta X prime squared. And when I reach the maximum compression, uh, the total pot potential energy stored in these springs will be equal to the mechanical energy of the system, and the change in kinetic energy is zero joules. So I go from uh, rest, uh, the 
second spring is pushed 15 centimeters to the right and then I go to rest again so I reach the maximum compression in the uh, first spring so <clears throat> one half k1 plus k2 delta x prime squared will be equal to 50.625 joules the total mechanical energy of the system and I will find that delta x prime is minus 15.0 centimeters because it's minus because it's pushed to the left okay so uh, the conclusion is that the maximum compression on the two springs are the same. They must be the same because mechanical energy is conserved and so the, when I have maximum compression of the uh, second spring uh, that's the maximum stretch of K1 basically and, uh, and then I start stretching K2 and compressing K1 so I have a positive displacement of 15 centimeters and then I have a negative displacement 15 centimeters uh, to compress the first spring okay uh, so this was an example for a conservation of energy in a system where we have no friction uh, we see that the when we compress spring K2 and stretch st a spring with spring constant K1 <clears throat> by 15 centimeters, we have total potential energy stored in the system and the kinetic energy is zero because it's released from rest at that point. Okay, and when is the maximum speed achieved? When is the maximum kinetic energy? The this potential energy stored in the two springs will be converted into kinetic energy so it will speed up as we go to the equilibrium point. Why? Because we feel this restoring force from the two springs. So K2 will be pushing it and K1 will be pulling it uh, to the back to the equilibrium position. So the net force is equal to zero when I go through the equilibrium position with no <clears throat> net stretches or compressions on these two springs. That's when I will have the maximum kinetic energy because all of the potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy. So when I write this, one half mv final square minus zero, because it's released from rest, I find the final speed. And the conservation of energy also implies that <clears throat> if I have uh, K2, the, the spring 2 compressed 15 centimeters, K1 is stretched by the same amount. If I go to the other extreme, it should be the same because uh, the total potential energy of the system is equal to the mechanical energy at that point with no kinetic energy. Uh, so we, we see that uh, the delta K is equal to zero joules because I go from rest and then I reach rest. So I go from one extreme to the other extreme on the spring. So this is uh, V is equal to zero, V is equal to zero, but there is a change of potential energy. Basically, the potential energy stored in the system, the total potential energy should be the same. Therefore, I must reach the same uh, magnitude of displacement but uh, because I'm moving to the left, it will be minus 15 uh, centimeters or minus 15 I hat.